Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault and today I'm coming to you with another From the Vault video. This is a video series where I highlight or show off some gun from my personal collection that I think is rare or interesting. And I think this gun fits both of those. You probably recognize what it is from the silhouette alone, especially if you were around in the 1980s and have ever seen a Chuck Norris movie or have seen the very famous photograph of the attempted assassination of Ronald Reagan and the Secret Service using a gun that looks very similar to this. This is an Uzi. And yes, this is a real one made in Israel by IMI, Israeli Military Industries. Now, no, this one is not full auto. This one is semi-automatic only, and it was imported as a semi-automatic rifle. And I know some people right now who just learned about the NFA are telling me, you can't legally own that because that's a short-barreled rifle. Well, I live here in Texas, and I filed a Form 1 and I replaced the barrel. Some people are gonna say, how do you make that 922R compliant? Well, this gun was imported as a semi-automatic rifle before 922R was a thing, and thus it does not require 922R compliance. And other people are gonna ask, Jason, where did you put the engraving for the SBR? Well, I put it on the bottom of the replacement barrel. And it's right there, and you can put it on the barrel. It does not always have to be on the receiver. So hopefully I answered those questions before anybody asked. And as I said, this is a semi-automatic version of the Uzi. It's a very heavy firearm. Now, this differs in the full auto for a number of different reasons. And a lot of people think that the semi-automatic Uzis, the Model A and the Model B, which this one is, are easily converted to full auto, either illegally now or back in the 1980s, legally before 1986. And that's actually... A myth, it's a misnomer, because the internals are actually quite different than the full automatic version. The easiest way to always tell if an Uzi is full automatic or semi-automatic is by looking at the side of the bolt when the bolt is closed. If you have this little ridge in here, or this little cutout, it is semi-automatic. And that is because there is a block in the back of the receiver when the bolt reciprocates that goes in that little channel. So it prevents a full auto bolt from being put into the receiver. So if you see a bolt that is completely flat, you know it is full auto. Another difference between the bolts, besides having that little cutout, is on the semi-automatic ones, the firing pin is a separate part, where on the full automatic bolts, it's integrated, it's a static one. So you guys know that the original submachine guns are open bolt designs. This is a closed bolt design, and it had to be that way because of the ATF's import restrictions. This also has a firing pin block safety as well well. A couple of differences between the Model A and the Model B really deal with that safety and also the front sight. The Model A's had a front sight which could be adjusted for elevation but as you turned it the post could move right or left but on the Model B's it's a straight up and down post and I like this design a lot better. The only reason the Model A's demand a little bit more price is because they're rare. There are a few more Model Bs than there are Model As. Now, as I said, this is a registered short-barreled rifle, and as you can see, I do have the stock. Yeah, it actually came with the stock, but I love the look of that stock. That is so cool. I love how it folds out, and it's really, really compact. I've always liked the industrial look of those wire stocks. You might also notice that in the background here, I actually have the original box. This is something that I think kind of completes the package. So I have the original outer sleeve as well, saying that it was imported by Action Arms. This box, of course, has seen some better days. And inside of the box, we have all of the things that came with it and I'll show you a few of those. Now, some people are gonna ask, did I cut and thread the barrel? No, I did not. I actually purchased this barrel. It's a US barrel from the Green Mountain Barrel Company. So that's where I got that. I did save the original barrel, and because the engraving is on the barrel itself, if I ever decided to sell this as a Title I firearm, I can have the ATF remove it and turn it back into a rifle. So here in the box, 
I have the original barrel and these barrels are super easy to change out. You just have to unscrew the cap on the front. We have all of the original accessories catalogs, the owner manual, the action arm shooting sports, I guess brochure. We have the original warranty card. I've actually bought a couple of other things as well, just kind of replacement parts like pins and the like. Now, when you bought this as a rifle back in the 1980s, if you did want to display it, making it look like a real Uzi, they had this faux barrel that you could install. So it is obviously solid. You cannot use this in any capacity. It looks like it's open on one end, but that is just made of aluminum and you could put it in there if you wanted to display it to make it look like the original. Now, the barrel that I bought is threaded. You can buy barrels though that are not threaded, which is what the originals would have been like. I may buy one of those as well one day. I have a magazine loader. You have the original sling that came with it. And I also bought an extra recoil spring. So that's what I got in the box. It's really cool to have the original box and the magazine. So here is one of the original 25 round magazines. There's also, I believe, 32 round magazines for this. And I want to say there's also 20 round magazines. But this is the original one that came in the box here, which was 25 rounds. And I've bought a few extra ones in the aftermarket as well. They're pretty plentiful. While the guns are pretty rare, the magazines are actually pretty available. So that is it. The Uzi Model B. This one is a short barreled rifle with a threaded barrel. Some people may like that, some people may not. It's just really cool. It's very heavy and I've actually shot a rifle version of this. I've never shot this one. This one is unfired from the 1980s and some people are gonna say, Jason, you're crazy to have a gun like that and not shoot it. Well, I'm a collector and I admire these as works of art. Yeah, some guns are tools, but some guns are just historic and interesting and that's what this one is. So what do you guys think? Have you ever shot an Uzi, whether that be a real full auto one or a semi-automatic one? These being so heavy, they have virtually no recoil and they are iconic. Yeah, if you like Chuck Norris movies, you got to have an Uzi. And I'm a child of the 80s, so yeah, what an iconic firearm. So let me know in the comment section below, do you like Uzis? Do you think they're cool? The one thing about them I'm not a big fan of, and this even goes for modern PCCs today, I don't like this very vertical grip because the magazine, of course, is straight and goes up through the pistol grip. I like it where the magazine is separate so you get a little bit more ergonomic grip design, but that's really my only gripe about it. But besides that, it is really, really cool. I'm glad to have the whole package, and this is one of the gems of my collection. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.